Right, we've been told to go very slow. We've been told to keep in first gear, which is a bit tricky when you're driving an automatic. Sometimes we get invites. Sometimes we get invites which are absolutely too good to refuse. This is one of them. Oh my God, that's a big bump as well. They knew there was a wheel here of some sort, I believe. Right. Yeah. But nobody had done anything about it. It just was ignored. We haven't bottomed out the car yet. That's right. what I'm concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> now you may remember we did a video a little while back on the Way and Aaron Canal. Really joyous video to make. A hugely exciting day. There was so much to see. One of the things that we saw along that adventure was something called Lording's Lock, and we just expected to see a normal canal lock, but we didn't. We saw a water wheel. We couldn't really figure out what exactly was going on there, other than maybe it was some crazy. Victorian attempt to get water out of the River Arran up into the canal. This was all built in 1780. There's an aqueduct, um, there's a lock and there's a weir. Over there was the lock keeper's house, but that's all gone. It lasted for about a hundred years, we think. After that time, the canal here was not working and was abandoned. The wheel itself just fell into disrepair yep. and was abandoned. It filled up ultimately with soil and muck. It was left in that way until mid 1990s, we'll say 1995, when a man called Winston Harwood, who is mentioned there, uh -huh. came down here and was instrumental in reconstructing this uh, lock the aqueduct and also he found this. Now when he found it, all he found initially was brickwork on the floor and nothing else. There was nothing there, nothing to show there was anything below. What happened is he dug down and he established the walls, the opening, the opening and the circle for the wheel and that's all he had. From that he and a number of other engineers worked out how the wheel worked and yep. I'll show you how that works now. So let's get this started and whilst I help Brian get this in motion let me give you a brief rundown on exactly how this works. So here is the view from above, south-ish being at the top of the diagram or photo. Now, the Aaron runs in two different ways here, but what you really need to know is it only used to run directly next to the wheel and this whole setup. This is an old map which highlights that flow of direction. Let's zoom in a bit here and mark the sides of the wheel and the leet structure. Now, the wheel needs water to power it, as you can imagine. Now, when we lift its doors in a moment, water from the Aaron will drop down into the wheel's pits. And in doing so, it will start things turning via the paddles and the downward motion of the water. Now, assuming, of course, the water level in the Aaron is high enough. More on that in a little bit. So how does the water then get lifted up into the canal via the same wheel? Well, you'll note there are buckets on the upside of the wheel as it rotates round. Now, this here is where there is a second entrance for the water to flow in. It flows along the leet here, pops inside another entrance to the side of the wheel and fills the buckets. So now the wheel's in motion, we can get up a little bit closer to some of the other parts and see exactly how they work. What I did was to take it all apart 
have these new stainless steel flanges here manufactured, which are very large, with a large number of bolts on the outside. A new central axis all the way through, so they can't move, bolted onto this very severe steel, and with new bearings. And what that's done is to ensure that the wheel itself is held concentric, and it can't deviate off that. Yeah. Whereas before, when they had the two stub axles, they ended up doing this and breaking all the bolts. Yeah. If you want, why I have old trousers. <laughs> in here, I'll, I'll get out of your way, That's right. you can actually see the bucket coming through and it lines up exactly with this hole. Nobody's changed this hole, this hole is original with the original brickwork. All I've done is to put plastic wood at the front. So the eagle-eyed viewer may have noticed that there isn't much water going in. In fact, there's no water at all going in here. This leak should be filled with water and the buckets should be transferring it to the top of the wheel and ultimately emptying it into the canal. What exactly is going on here today? When we got here, Brian was really disappointed because straight away he said, ah, it's not going to work because he looked at the weir just across there and the level was about three or four inches off the top of the weir. I was thinking, well, what does that mean? Surely that will still work because that's very high up. Uh, the river seems really high. But the levels at which it comes in at, and there's two levels, which we'll show you now on a bit of overlay. Well, first of all, the water drops down, as Brian explained. That turns a wheel. That's the easy part. But what we need, if I jump down here into this leak, my feet a bit wet, we need water to come in there. And we're about two or three inches too low for that. So it shows how Despite the wonderful invention they came up with in 1780, it shows you it was potentially quite temperamental based on the level of the water. And we understand that even in 1780, it was still as changeable, um, so therefore still as sporadic in terms of its use. And we also think, give it a couple of months, and we'll also be up to here, because you can see where the water has been uh, last winter. So again, completely unusable. So this, despite being a wonderful uh, sort of a Victorian or even earlier than Victorian, what's 1780? Who was the king or queen in 1780? Despite it being a very early canal invention from the 1780s, it was still very temperamental. So the owners of this canal are now spitting feathers because they can't get the revenue, because they can't get the freight. Yeah. It's just a mess. All was not lost because just two weeks later, Brian came back. Two more inches of water on the Aaron was available. And well, this did the trick as these shots show. We're back in business. But what it has shown us is that what a short window was available for this means to get water into the canal, potentially just a few months of the year. Brian and his team have worked wonders over the last year or so and he did want us to highlight it would not have been possible without a strong team of volunteers. And of course it should be mentioned the work here was made possible thanks to a generous grant for which the Way and Aaron Canal Trust is extremely grateful. They have not only saved a significant piece of heritage here but they've also given it a new lease of life. Brian, what can people do now to help out uh, you and obviously the team and the rest of the Wet and Aaron Canal Society, I guess that's the name? There's a tremendous amount of work still to be done every day on the Wet and Aaron Canal. And because of that, we're always looking for volunteers. Uh, I'm a retired engineer and I've had great enjoyment working on this and great satisfaction. We can uh, see that. Working with myself and other engineers and other people who are not engineers on this wheel. It has been tremendous and through the generosity of the charity in London, we were able to do this. So if people are as kind as that with their labor and with their money, then the whole Canal Trust will benefit no end. Wonderful, thank you for your time, Brian. Thank you. Thank you.